Sometimes in life you just gotta say, what the fuck? What the fuck? <laughs> Make your move. Oh shit. There's no substitute. You're fucking beautiful, <laughs> man! <laughs> I have to ask the viewers, which is you guys, how can you hate Tom Cruise? How can you hate this man? Let's all have a great summer! And action! Let's see it's a movie! You see that craziness? That's Tom, and he does that for his fans. He's a crazy man. He does his own stunts and I just don't understand the hate with him. So that's why I'm here to review the biggest movie of the year, Top Gun Maverick. Tom Cruise is my boy, and if you don't know me very well, Tom Cruise is my second favorite actor in the world. He does his own stunts, he's cool to his fans, and he just makes fun, non-political movies. He just makes fun blockbusters, without question. Now people might like Top Gun is their favorite, Edge of Tomorrow, The Firm, Jerry Maguire, maybe The Last Samurai or Magnolia. My favorite Tom Cruise movie is Collateral. If you haven't seen this, you're an idiot. And it's got Tom Cruise as a villain, which he needs to play again. Now out of respect for Tom, I'm gonna leave these on the entire time. Just out of respect. They said, so what, have you met an SP? <laughs> Hanging off Free Willy there. There you are. That's you hanging off a cat. That's fantastic. This oh, one. This. Oh my god, why did anyone show me that before? That is hilarious. I did get the honor to meet the Tom Cruise impersonator, Mike Fisher, during the International Portland Air Show this year, which was super cool. It was really fun. I got to interact with him, and we both got to just, like, act like Tom Cruise, and it was just a weird experience. It was, like, really fun at the same time, because he's, like, a hardcore fan, too. I really enjoyed that, so it really helped with the Top Gun year. Just Tom keeps providing juice. He just keeps providing more and more great movies, and Top Gun Maverick is one of the best movies of the year. If you have not seen it I am going to spoil the movie and share what I liked about it and things that I have to spoil or things that don't make logical sense I had to see this a couple times come up with a firm grade because the first time I went in it with a really unopened mind because everything was very unrealistic with aviation and then there were parts that were extremely realistic with aviation so for me to be able to explain these things it's gonna spoil the movie so if you have not seen it Turn the review off and just go see the movie because it is fantastic. It's one of the best movies of the year. It's better than it looks from the trailers and the marketing that you've seen. It's Tom! Just go see it. I shouldn't even have to tell you to go see it. I did want to mention that I meant to get this review out before the start of this year, but this review has taken me way longer to edit than I thought, and I've never spent this much time on a review before. It's the longest review I've ever done, but I did want to mention I apologize. This review is meant to come out a long time ago. Without further ado, let's get into the review. This movie is a well-written drama that sets the weight of the seriousness of any mission. And when there is an argument, the argument is very well written. I personally felt the weight of these arguments. They were very good. Your team leader up there. Why are you, why is your team dead? Sir, he's the only one who made it to the target. A minute late. We gave enemy aircraft time to shoot him down. He is dead. You don't know that. You're not flying fast enough. You don't have a second to waste. We made it to the target. And superior enemy aircraft intercepted you on your way out. Then it's a dogfight. Against fifth generation fighters. Yeah, we still have a chance. In an F-18. It's not the plane, sir. It's the pilot. Exactly. The movie does a wonderful job on letting you feel Maverick's battle with making choices that can potentially kill one of his trainees. You really feel the pressure he's under. He's just broken as a person and as he tells Val Kilmer this you can just feel that he doesn't know what to do because whatever decision he makes is going to be a bad decision. If I send him on this mission. send him. He'll never forgive me. Either way, I could lose him forever. The Navy needs Maverick. 
I appreciate that it didn't have any politics. It didn't hyper focus on anything political that's going on in the world. The world's already a terrible place sometimes. Sometimes it's nice to shut all that shit out and just enjoy a movie. And let me tell you, this movie does a phenomenal job. They just kill it. When they want you glued to a moment, it didn't even have to try because the real aviation and perfect editing and pacing to this movie just has you wired in. So the movie's about Tom Cruise going back to Top Gun to train the one percent that's the best of the best on a mission, a secret mission, and he needs to train them to do it properly. That's the core basis of the movie there. Outside of that, there's some drama, great action, cool stunts. It's got real aviation, so everything feels real and looks real. They really help people that are not very educated on aviation really grasp what this would be like if you were in the cockpit of the F-18. It's exciting, but it's intense. There's a lot on the line when the action scenes are happening. And they have a couple moments where it's dead quiet. You just hear the sounds of the jets and it really intensifies the scene because you're just hearing the noise and you're hearing the pilots communicate with each other. Looks like we're clear on radar, Matt. Let's not take it for granted. And the movie does a great job of keeping this pace going all the way through. So when there's drama, it's not just necessarily drama to have drama. The drama lines up with the story of what's going on. And it really matches what happened in the action scenes or what happened during the training with the recruiter pilots. I think it fit well. I think the vibe they went off of was better than the old one. The old one was very, it was almost comedic, like a spoof. There's a lot of jokes in it. And one-liners, which is the movie's universally famous for is their one-liners. <laughs> I was inverted. But this one took a way more serious tone. It cut out all the jokey shit, got to the point, and had a really serious storyline. That was good drama. Sir? We both know you didn't want this job, Captain. Sir, they're not ready. Well, it was your job to get them ready. Sir, they have to believe that this mission can be flown. And all you've managed to do is teach them that it can't. Sir. You're grounded, Captain. Permanently. The editing was so clean and properly paced, it doesn't drag ever. Like ever. The two hours flies on by. By the time the movie's over, you're like, wow, that was a great experience. The ending is intense. And there's a big dogfight. And I thought they shot it really well. The angles work. There is some CGI with some of the jets. Some of the maneuvers they make, they could never do in real life without risking killing the pilots. So I understand why some of those are there. But the stakes were high in the end. So when you're finally in the mountains, you know what's going to happen. And they really play with that a lot. And try to just put you in the cockpit and stress you out as much as they can. And bring up a ton of situations where you're not sure if they're going to get out alive or not. And if you ever get a chance to see this movie, or if you have seen it, I hope anyone who watches this movie appreciates the hard work that went into the geography of the action sequences. Because there aren't any moments where you can't tell what's going on during the action. Most movies have choppy editing, and you can't see what is going on on screen. And that is something I appreciate so much about this film. I've recommended it to everyone I know, and everyone I do know has liked it. I have not met a person yet that has not liked this movie. Outstanding. Get us in touch with the boat. Now, as an average movie watcher who's not paying attention to aviation, this movie is almost perfect. It's very fun. I don't think anyone's going to watch this and be bored or not get something out of it that they don't enjoy. And there's some great humor and heart to the movie. And there's a lot of teamwork in it. Seeing the team work together like this for a mission this intense is cheerful. And the movie was very, very careful not to mention who they were fighting. I think for money reasons and just to not offend anybody, they don't mention who they're fighting or who the enemy is. There's no indication of who they are. I personally think it's Russia because they were in the mountains and that would make sense logically with aviation, cold mountains, tons of sams, terrain like that. You know, even the opening of this film was tearful for a fan because they start the movie exactly the same way the old Jerry Bruckheimer movies started in the 80s. 
and it was a really awesome throwback. And I think if you already are a Top Gun fan, you've already seen this and you absolutely loved it. Be possible for you not. In my personal opinion, this one's way better than the old one. Now, if you are an aviation fan, there's a lot of illogical things in there. This is one of the things that I had a problem with with the movie that I'm going to get into. It was uh, oddly balanced, and I still don't understand why they went so far out of their way to make things realistic, and then they went really far out of their way to make things very unrealistic. I, I think I understand why. It's probably an audience thing. Most people are not going to know the aviation language. So the first time I saw this, I was very harsh on it. I was like, oh, this is BS. You know, that didn't work. They named the jet wrong. The jet can't fly that fast. These Sams wouldn't cordulate like that with flares like there was all this nerdy aviation stuff coming out and I've liked aviation since I was a little kid I've been obsessed with jets I've been to like every air show since 99 when I first saw this I was a bit critical towards it I took all the entertainment value out of it and it wasn't going for ultra realism in my defense I only thought this because Tom Cruise was so persistent and passionate about doing everything with real jets I thought they were gonna go with realistic aviation as well and it wasn't going for that I took all the entertainment out of it which is my fault and just to take it for what it is because that's what it's providing and it does a damn good job of it this movie is just a fun blockbuster film that's why it's made so much money. Movies like this don't make this amount of money because they're good. It's because they're fun and people see them multiple times. It just made a fun aviation drama. At the beginning of Top Gun Maverick, it shows Tom Cruise flying on a inspired SR-71 Blackbird. That jet doesn't actually exist. Now that jet in the movie flies, if I remember right, Mach like 9.2 which is extremely over the top of what the fastest jet in the world is. There is an SR-72 Blackbird, and that can fly Mach 9. That's his max speed. That jet isn't a fighter jet. It's more for spying. What bothers me is how exaggerated these speeds were on the jets. In the movie, Tom Cruise and the entire team train on F-18s. It's not an F-15 or an F-14 Tomcat. Those were the original movie. And in the movie, they trained them to fly at Mach 9. My head just... I was like, Mach 9? That is seven times faster than the jet can actually fly. The thing would shred like cheese on a grater if it flew that fast. The person in the cockpit would pass out. And that's one of the problems I had with this movie is the exaggeration of speeds. The fastest speed that an F-18 can fly is Mach 1.8. The F-22 can only fly Mach 2.2. The Tomcat can only fly 2.3. Now the SR-22 is the fastest jet in the world. That is rumored to fly at Mach 10. So when Tom Cruise is talking about how fast they're gonna go through these mountains, and they're like, yeah, you're gonna be flying Mach 10. And I'm like, this jet can only fly Mach 1.8. And I just told you that's not possible. But then when he started mentioning the parameters of this speed, like how when you're going that fast, it's gonna feel like your lungs are filling up with cement and it will feel like an elephant is sitting on your chest. So it was weird that the movie exaggerated the speed so much, but then it really gave you a realistic look on what it would feel like if you were going that speed. As I mentioned, there's a big dogfight in the end where they're in the mountains. What was cool was they used real aviation language. And I felt like whoever wrote the ending had basic knowledge of how aviation works because in the ending, Maverick is with Rooster and there are two jet enemy jets following them side to side and they are making signals and they don't know the signals so the enemy becomes suspicious and then one jet goes from the side and the other jets behind him as the other jets over to their right and he said oh no they're going into weapons envelope and weapons envelope means you have eyes on the target and then you have one getting behind the target to attack in case they try to maneuver out of there you know obviously Maverick attacks the enemy and then evades him and he can't outrun this jet because they're fighting against a fifth generation fighter which is the Y-22. It's basically an F-22 but it's very very advanced. But what I liked about this scene is there's a part where he says I have to fly down into the mountains to confuse its targeting system. Now when you go down into the mountains a jet's targeting system it gets scrambled up and so it would confuse the missile. The missile can't lock on to what it's looking at because the signal is scrambled. They did that in the movie and I was like oh that's yeah, that, that makes sense. That's how he's outrunning it, and that's why that Y-22 is not firing missiles. It's firing bullets. He has to manually fire bullets. 
And I wanted to uh, mention a lot of people ask me in the end the Y22 how it spins. Well, that's called the vector spin. The Y22's vector spin has thrust vectoring engines which give the F22 sharp aerodynamics, right? And that's giving it ability, maneuverability, and energy. It also has a nozzle which can be moved by 20 degrees by the pilot manually. That's how cool it is. And that's basically how this jet swings around in a big circle. In less nerdy language, it's like a NASA pod in space. There's these air pockets and basically he's moving it. And when he pulls back, they go tss, tss, and the air is shooting out different directions he wants to spin. Depending on where he has the controls, he pulls back, the air is gonna shoot out this way. I need to make a quick correction. That jet I was calling the Y-22 is called the SU-57. It is not the Y-22 that I kept pronouncing it as. It's the SU-57, which is a Russian jet. That's why I'm wearing a gray sweater, because I read my notes wrong. I should have double checked them, but there were so many jets on my notes. I kind of got them scrambled up a little bit, but I did want to correct my video to let you know that is not a Y-22. It is an SU-57. Russian jet. Gonna get this review out today. It is so late and I filmed the review months ago. That's why I'm wearing the grass sweater. So ah, I just caused myself to edit more and I'm not happy about it. So let's move on. Some people I was like, when I see jets flying around, what's with the, the smoke around the jets? Can I see like the sound waves of them going faster than the speed of sound? A lot of people think that. You can't see sound waves like that. The smoke that you see in movies in real life they're coming from jets going at high speeds. It's just the hot, humid exhaust from the jet engines with the atmosphere. And at high altitudes, the vapor pressure and temperature is coming from the exhaust gas. That's all it is. One of my last gripes that I would like to mention before I end this video is the ending dogfight with all these SAM missiles that were being fired at the F-18s. In the ending, they go through the mountains, right? and they get a ton of missiles shot at them. Now, they're not just regular missiles. People don't understand there's different kinds of missiles. You have SAM missiles, Sparrow missiles, Bullhorn missiles, and ARAM missiles. Now, the problem I have with this is the illogical nonsense of how many were shot at them. Their whole thing was just shoot a bunch of flares at it. There's a grid on a SAM missile and it will go to the hottest thing on the grid. It's like infrared. It's gonna fly to whatever the brightest and hottest object is. Now an ARAM missile is just gonna go towards a jet. It's just gonna stick with it. It doesn't care how hot it is. Whatever it logs onto, it's gonna stick to that until it runs out of fuel or it hits it. It doesn't get confused with other targets. So I think that the possibility of these being bullhorn missiles was higher. The reason a jet shoots out all those flares you see in movies to get away from a missile or a SAM missile is because the flares are hotter than the engine. The flares burn at 20,000 degrees Fahrenheit. That exceeds the temperature of the aircraft's engine and exhaust. That's tricking the infrared guided missile system to go away from the jet. The problem that I have with this is they fired 30 or 40 SAMs at them at once. And with them being in the mountains, that makes the scene even more unrealistic because since it's cold in the mountains, <laughs> these missiles are gonna be able to read the target a lot better. So shooting all these flares out of these jets is just ridiculous. The flares only run at 2000 degrees for about four seconds and then they sizzle out fast. And they made it seem like the F-18s has had an unlimited supply of these things in their jet. <laughs> Now granted, if you were in a, a pinch and you only had to avoid two missiles, shooting that many flares out would deter it from you being hit. Well, it would work. And that's why when Tom Cruise went to save Rooster and he pulled back, he went <laughs> That worked because he shot so many of them. The other ones, the jets are turning and they're shooting out going this way, but the missile's already turning with them if you pay attention to it. So it's not gonna really be going straight and then all of a sudden see this and wanna go this way. Also, when the jets got hit 
it kind of just broke the back off and then the cockpit where the pilot is was like these missiles are meant to shred and destroy it in multiple spots so when it explodes it shoots all these pellets out and it's supposed to blow it in half but it's meant to hit it in certain spots so it kills the pilot also, when they fly off the runway on the Tomcat, when Rooster and Maverick are on the runway and they get in the old Tomcat jet, I was confused because I was like, you guys just blew this up. How are you taking off on this flat runway? You guys just blew it up. It'd be destroyed. Now, I thought the ending of the movie had a lot of emotional weight. I personally thought they were going to die. We're out of flares, man. He's already on us! Ah, this is not good! And I wanted them to die because I like really negative endings. But I do understand why they survived. I think the ending was very appropriate because the ending was realistic too. How when the jet passed them, when it was turning around, Rooster was like, Shit! He's already on us! And it can get on your ass that fast fast like you don't stand a chance against it i liked when maverick was like you're gonna have to eject this is the only way to do it and what he does is he goes to low altitude and then he pulls up and goes at a straight angle but what you do is you put yourself in a stall because you're tilted at such a nasty degree your altitude's going up and you're going very fast but you're almost like a slug you can't turn if an enemy's trying to shoot you down the worst fucking thing you can do is fly straight up I think Maverick and Rooster surviving that and being saved, it really worked. It's not the kind of movie that needs a sad ending. I think Iceman dying was the sad part that they needed and that's really all that needed to happen with the legacy characters was to have Iceman pass away. That scene was very emotional and I do know that they used Val Kilmer's brother's voice and used modulators so he could talk because he had, he had got throat cancer if you didn't know and he cannot speak at all anymore. And the way they sent off Iceman was really a great way to end Val Kilmer's career. That's like a great send off. You know, one of his best characters, one of his most famous movies, comes back for the sequel. He does something for the main character and then sadly passes away. And then they have a emotional tribute goodbye to him. And I do truly believe how this movie ended was very well thought out and very well done. And I know I just went on and on about the implausibilities of aviation and what was unrealistic about it. But don't let those complaints overshadow anything. Top Gun Maverick is still a very well-crafted action drama with tons of heart. The script lets the audience feel Maverick's pain with the passing of friends, his fear of being a leader, having to make tough decisions that will scar him for life, and the decisions have weight to them. We're all in the cockpit with him, feeling anxious and stressed out due to the extreme dangers of this suicide mission we go on with the team. Maverick is a lost relic, a legend from the first movie who comes back to Top Gun to train new recruits one more time before moving on with his Navy career. And don't be fooled, Top Gun Maverick without question is one of the greatest blockbuster movies ever made. It will be the most fun you've had watching a movie in a very long time, I promise you, because Tom Cruise's daredevil efforts are perfectly calculated calibrated for maximum entertainment in this amazing film and it deserves the attention and praise it had gotten in 2022. Look, people can talk crap about Tom Cruise all they want, but he legitimately may be the greatest action star who ever lived. And with all that being said, Top Gun Maverick deserves a grade I don't give out very often. I'm going to grade Top Gun Maverick Well, that's my Top Gun review, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. Maybe you learned something new today. I thought I wanted to do something a little different. Maybe educate you on something I knew something about instead of just ranting on about what I liked, what I didn't like. I thought it'd be more fun to just share some knowledge of jets and share my passion. And maybe you learned something out of it and it was more fun and engaging to you that you're learning something about how aviation works. I think you'll have fun with it. I don't think anyone's going to give a crap about the aviation stuff. So in that, I think you will have a fantastic, great time with Top Gun Maverick. And I highly, highly recommend it. It definitely deserved itself an A. And I hope you go check it out. And I'll see you movie fans on my next review. Thanks for watching. Let's see it's a movie.